All right, so let's jump right into the uh, operational aspects of using Wave Sound Grid Server. Uh, you know, maybe the first place we sh should start is really just go right to the plugins rack. Um, as you notice, this is the uh, S6L plugins rack, and we can see all the plugin slots there. Uh, I've also set up a number of channels, a number of pathways on the console itself. You can kind of see that in the overhead view here. I've set up a mono input, a stereo input, uh, a mono out stereo return, uh, like an effects loop path, a parallel path. I've got some noise coming into the console, and I've also just added the left right bus here as well. So as you can kind of see, I've added those uh, to the plugin rack as well. Uh, actually, I'll go ahead and add the uh, left right here. We're going to do that as an insert, so right on the main left right bus. And we're just going to start instantiating uh, Waves plugins here. Now remember, in the in Venue Land, you're going to see that Waves shell in the plugins list, right? Uh, so you know, don't be looking for all the individual Waves plugins there. They're going to be under the shell. And then when we get back to our plugins rack. Uh, we're actually just going to load that shell here and then have access to all the Waves plugins. So, for instance, if we go to the mono input here, I'm just going to go to mono and effect, and we have the choice of loading either a sound grid rack or a sound grid, uh, excuse me, sound grid sidechain rack. Uh, we're just going to load a regular sound grid rack here. Uh, we're going to do the same thing really here for the stereo. We're just going to load a regular sound grid rack. Uh, for the parallel path, we'll do the same thing, although we're going to do an other here because we want to do it as mono in, stereo out, and we're going to use it as an effect path. So here we're going to do uh, sound grid rack one in, two out. And then, of course, for the insert for the left right bus, here, you know, here's probably a good place. Here we'll use a, a, a sound or a sidechain one here. So we'll go to effect and we'll go sound grid rack sidechain for the left right insert. Okay, so we've got four racks here. And the first thing you should pick up on here, of course, is that for each plugin slot in Venue, you get a sound grid rack and eight Waves plugin possibilities for that particular rack. So, um, you know, the, the thing to kind of process here is that you have the possibilities in one Venue slot to have eight uh, Waves plugins and then another three slots worth of Venue plugin as well. And that, those could be Waves rack as well, for that matter. So the plugin possibilities here are pretty grand in terms of what you could possibly do. All right, so I thought I'd start here today, uh, really, in this section, just by taking you on a little tour of the sound grid rack, right? Uh, so you see one here that we have pulled up for the mono input. And uh, really, one of the things you want to do right away is get some sense of what rack you have here. And you can do that right by the Waves uh, logo, right? So if I click on that, I can get uh, version information here, uh, which is great. I, I can also get website information, phone information. Uh, you know, uh, all the stuff, all, a, a lot of relevant information here. And I, I honestly would probably keep this off the console. I would take a picture of this, screenshot, however you want to do it. Uh, but I would want to have that handy for me at all times. Uh, in addition, we, we can get to the sound grid inventory here. Uh, inventory in this case refers to hardware inventory. So you'll notice if I click on that, up on the MTM becomes uh, the, the uh, sound grid inventory, which tells us uh, what hardware pieces we actually have attached. Uh, you can also uh, reach that inventory on our devices page. So if we go to devices, you'll notice that I've got Waves Sound Grid Rack here in slot six. And if I click on that, I can show inventory in the same way. It's important to note I can also get to the Waves Central here, Launch Waves Central here, if my console is attached to the internet. All right, so let's go back to our plugins rack. I'll close all this out. Uh, so let's carry on with our little tour here. Obviously, you have input level and output level capabilities in the Wave Sound Grid uh, that you can adjust if you need to do that. Uh, this is where your voices are going to be listed. It's 128 voices, uh, so a lot of possibilities for plugins here. Here's your DSP readout. You can get it, keep a good read on how much DSP you're using. And you know, if you're starting to get close on the rack, you might want to consider just pulling back in a few areas, whatever you need to do. Uh, to the right of the inventory, we, we get an undo redo uh, capability here. And it's important to understand that this is for the rack, right? This is not just for the plugins, this is for the rack. And at this point, probably as good a time as any to just start instantiating some plugins. All right, so let's go to our first mono input. And here, let's see, let's go, um, let's put in a C4. We'll just start putting some plugins in place here. Whoops, I can get the menu thing to work right here. 
C4, and then we'll follow that up maybe with some EQ, maybe like an EQP1 or something. Yeah, that'd be great. And then let's follow that up with maybe a DS, or let's go DS, uh, which I think is in Dyne 2, if I remember right. No, I know it's in Dyne 1. DS, sir. And then, of course, let's go. I don't know. Let's go. Maybe let's put some harmonic stuff on there. Let's go maybe with an Aphex there. Okay, so we've got a mono chain built here for that mono channel now. And as you can see, all of the plugins are in a chain, right? So um, in terms of the stereo one, you know, it'd be exactly the same process. And here's where we can kind of show a little bit of the navigational capabilities here. Uh, if, if we want to just duplicate this in stereo, uh, we could just simply go to the venue window, just like we've always been able to kind of do in venue here and right click on that and say, copy plugin settings, which in this case are the rack settings. Go to the next plugin, which is stereo. Remember, we came from mono here, and we're going to paste that now. And you can see it's auto automatically taking care of the mono to stereo conversion. It's just made a duplicate of that rack uh, in stereo for us on that stereo channel. So in the same order, etc. cetera. Uh, let's go down to the um, our send and return. Uh, maybe this one will set up a reverb, obviously. Let's go reverb. Maybe let's, go, let's use... H verb and we're going to go mono stereo here and then maybe after that let's let's get kind of cool and let's put maybe some limiting slash compression after that maybe we'll go let's put an API 2500 in there we'll use some of the Steve Lilly White stuff there maybe so we'll do a little room crush there so to speak all right uh, let's move on to our left right maybe we'll just do an insert here uh, let's see maybe we'll go um, well let's put another 2500 on there that's one of my favorite uh, compressors for sure and then maybe we'll do some harmonic stuff here let's go let's put the Kramer tape on our left right bus here and then we'll follow that up uh, let's just uh, let's do this go let's go c6 after that okay all right so there you have a whole bunch of plugins in play and we'll kind of finish our tour here now so let's go back to our mono channel and as I was saying, this is a uh, like a 32 levels of undo, redo. So if we make changes and we want to undo them, redo them, kind of get back and forth, maybe we make a mistake, whatever we can get back. In addition, in the rack, you have the ability to do an A and B comparison uh, where you have an A register and a B register. And this applies to the entire rack. So you could actually kind of build two different racks, put them in A and B, and just kind of bounce back and forth and listen to the difference in the racks. Very, very powerful feature. Uh, in the Wave Sound Grid here. So you do that just simply by clicking on this. As you can see, we've got uh, this rack built into register A. We don't have anything in register B yet, which takes us right to this section here. This is a way of copying settings from A to B, so you can create a, uh, an AB point to, uh, uh, to compare. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that there. And now you can notice that I've got both A and B the same. I can set up A one way. Go to B and just compare it, uh, compare it uh, back and forth. So again, very, very powerful kind of thing. Uh, here you have uh, navigation to uh, bounce through presets. And again, these are rack presets. So if you have different racks built and you want to try them on a given input, you can just literally scroll through them here and get back to them. Okay, so uh, pretty cool stuff. All right, so I'm going to copy this again and put it back. All right, in terms of the load save section here, remember this is the waves environment here. So you're actually loading or saving entire racks here. Uh, so, uh, you know, just keep in mind, there are two different levels of this, right? We're gonna load and save entire racks and presets, which we'll talk about here in just a few minutes. And then we can also load and, and save individual presets down here. Notice the similarity in the window here. This one is dealing specifically with uh, the plugin presets. This is dealing specifically with the mono pre or the uh, the rack presets. Excuse me. We can also have some navigation here up in the venue window. If we go here, we can uh, do this uh, repatch here as opposed to having to do it here. Uh, same with the insert. If you notice, we get down to the side chain rack. Um, we can actually choose the side chain sources here uh, that we might want to side chain into this particular uh, particular plugin as well. All right, uh, we get some listing of snapshots here again, which we'll cover here in just a few minutes. All right, so that's kind of the uh, the navigation of the windows. 
etc. We can do all of the normal drag and drop that we want to do uh, normally, I, I, as you guys have been able to do in Wave Sound Grid before, if we drag one unit up, maybe we want to put that uh, Apex before the DSer. It's just as simple as that, and we've actually changed the signal flow there. In terms of rack layout, remember uh, when we're in Venue Rack, we can always drag and drop uh, to move or actually create a duplicate here as well. Uh, maybe we want to drag and drop and say, well, just, just copy that plug in here and we create a duplicate there, right, that we can use on anything else, okay? All right, so the next thing I want to cover here really quickly while I have a little bit of time in this particular chapter is just how to control these plugins. So let's go, uh, maybe let's go up here. Yeah, let's just start there in the, uh, in the C4. So I've got a number of inputs here. Uh, if I were to select one of them, uh, if you notice in the overhead here, the plugin comes right up available on the CKM, on the knob modules as, uh, as they're known. And if you pick, if you kind of look at it closely here, you can see that the layout of the encoders is actually very similar to the visual layout in the plugin itself, right? So as we get to, for instance, gain here, you know, here's the different gains. So you can see it's all kind of laid out very, very similar. And if we don't get to all the controls, we can actually scroll. So take a look at the plugin now, and you'll notice that some of the uh, controls are outlined in red. That's what's currently available to you on the encoders right now uh, to be able to manipulate them. If I use this little scrolling system right next to the plugins button, I can go to the next page. So you'll notice that now there's a different set of red outlines and those correlate to this set of encoders here. If I scroll back, then I go back to the other controls. So we can actually get to all of the controls on a given plugin uh, for uh, or with the encoders, all right? And of course, that applies for everything in the rack. As we go to the next plugin, we've tried to logically lay these out to where it looks very similar to the actual plugin to try to keep you connected uh, to the screen here. So uh, nice way to work here. And really, one of the really beautiful things about S6L, remember, is that we can have multiple local selection, right, where we can work on multiple things at one time. So for instance, if I had these inputs spread out a little bit, where I have my mono input here, my stereo input here, my mains, and uh, effects return, etc. Remember the concept of local selection here. I can locally select one here and be working on it here. I can locally select this channel and be working on its plugin here. I can locally select here and be working on this plugin here. So you have three areas of work here. And remember, anything that's in the center section, if I select it, it moves over to the right hand knob module. All right, so you can get to a lot of stuff really, really quickly here and navigate that very, very fluently. So um, that probably just about covers it for operation and navigation. That should get you around the, the rack pretty, uh, pretty effectively, I think. Um, great operating it on the console. So much fun as opposed to having to always reach for a mouse and do it. I love being able to do it on the console just like we did in the analog days, right? So, uh, All right, so we'll move on to um, actually the filing system next. Remember I mentioned earlier we have some overlap in the filing system where there's a little bit of redundancy where you kind of do the same thing whether you're doing it in the waves architecture or you're doing it in the venue architecture, but it's really effective either way. Okay, so we'll move on to file structure.